Lionel Messi. Another one. Man, stop playing with me. What? Lionel Messi, the 2021 Ballon d'Or winner. Hats off to the Messiah for number seven, because at the end of the day, regardless of what people might want to tell you on the internet, the man had a fantastic year. Was there ever any doubt? Of course not. He was a uh, he was a shoe in. <laughs> no one, uh, no one, no one thought that uh, he shouldn't have won the uh, the award. Obviously, there was doubt. There is, there's always doubt when it comes to this award, regardless of who the winner is. I'd imagine that, over the entirety of the award's history, there have only been a small handful of instances where the eventual winner was essentially uncontested. And even in those cases, I'm sure you wouldn't find it difficult to find someone who was not in agreement of the eventual winner. Naturally, this year was no exception. So, what's the point of this video, you ask? Well, there isn't one. I just thought, why not? No, no, I'm kidding. I, I have a point to make, I swear. Seeing as the winner of the prestigious award is always simply announced based on who got more votes, with little to no analysis on if they truly deserved it or not, I thought maybe we could take a look into it ourselves. In this video, we'll be doing three things. First, we'll briefly go over the history of the award, noting some common trends, inconsistencies, surprise winners, and a few other little details. Second, we'll be briefly going over the calendar years of the favorites to note what they achieved, how they played, the circumstances they played in, and what records they broke, if any. Third, we'll round it all up and I'll give my opinion on who I think really deserved the golden ball. Not that my opinion matters, but this is my channel, after all. So, with that being said, who deserved the 2021 Ballon d'Or? Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. As you all know, I have a long-term sponsor for this channel that I really love working with, and they're back by popular demand. Ladies and gentlemen, the like button. Go ahead and show them some love, please. Once again, thanks so much to the like button for sponsoring this video. All right, let's jump right in. The Ballon d'Or was started all the way back in 1956 by France football, and more specifically, by this guy, Gabriel Hano, a former French footballer turned journalist. Quite the career change, I must say, but perhaps it's not so different than players becoming pundits once their bodies tap out. In any case, after an injury caused by a flying accident, he was forced to give up the game and in his post-playing career contributed quite a bit to French and European football. Apart from being credited with creating the Ballon d'Or, he is also credited with introducing league football to France. League football that we now refer to as the Farmers League 1. That, that we now refer to as... as Ligue 1. As a matter of fact, him and another French journalist, Jacques Ferrand, are credited with driving the creation of the Champions League. Quite an important figure this guy is. The first ever winner of the award was this guy, Stanley Matthews, an English right winger who, quite astonishingly, won the award at 41 years of age. And even further to that, he retired at 50. 50! I was out of breath going up the stairs the other day, and this guy was a professional footballer at 50. Madness. As time has gone by, the award has been given to a whole host of incredible players. 65 years worth of incredible players, no less. From Alfredo Di Stefano, to George Best, to Kevin Keegan, to George Weah, to Zinedine Zidane, and of course, to Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. All insane players, all deserving of the award for their contributions to world football when they picked it up. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, the award has not been without its controversies and shortcomings over the years. For starters, up until 1995, only European players playing in Europe were eligible for the award, meaning the likes of Pele and Maradona were never recipients. From 95 onwards, a ruling came about that stated that, to be eligible, you only need to be active in a European league. Coincidentally, that was also the same year that George Weah, a legendary Liberian, won the award for his efforts with AC Milan. Oof, oof, sorry, uh, I meant President Weir, the current president of Liberia. Shout out to my man George, that's quite the leap, I'm not gonna lie, so hats off to you. Any Liberians watching this, how was, how was George Weir doing in office? Comment your thoughts below. Anyway, as of 2007, the award was open to players from any nationality playing in any league around the world. However, considering the fact that every player that has won the award ever since then has been playing in Europe, that rule change didn't really change anything at all. 
In addition to the eligibility of the Ballon d'Or, the award has gone through several changes and modifications as the game and the world for that matter has progressed. Despite all of these changes, at its core, the award has more or less been the same throughout its existence. Historically, winners have predominantly been attackers, meaning strikers, wingers and attacking midfielders. I guess this is a consequence of the fact that the premise of the game is to score more than the opposition and attackers are overwhelmingly more likely to contribute the most in that regard. Oh. What's the game about? No, what's, the what's the game about? Where are you United talking about Salah? The game's about, the game's about goals, Jamie. The game's about goals. On the midfielder front, it seems a player has to be almost godlike to even be considered for the award, let alone actually win it. The likes of Zinedine Zidane, Pavel Nedved and Kaká were all exceptional in their winning years. But even these selections face criticism by some, particularly in the case of Nedved, who won the award in 2003. He beat the likes of Thierry Henry, who was pretty much in his prime back then, putting up insane numbers for Arsenal, and Paolo Maldini, who actually captained the Milan side that beat Nedved's Juventus in the Champions League final that year. Nedved himself even later came out and admitted that he believed Henry was more deserving of the award. And I'm sure I don't need to remind any of you about Luka Modric and his controversial win in the 2018 Ballon d'Or after winning the Champions League with Real Madrid and getting to the World Cup final with Croatia. Now, I personally didn't think that he was deserving of the award that year as even though he played really well, he missed much of the year through injury or miscellaneous absences. Meanwhile, Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, pretty much shouldered the goal scoring for Madrid's Champions League win by large part, having contributed to just under 61% of their goals for that campaign. Messi also had a great year, as did Salah in his record-breaking first season with Liverpool. But then again, perhaps that's just my goal scoring bias creeping in. I'll concede that much. It's hard to break away from that way of thinking, to be fair. And even further to that, I'm sure I don't even need to tell you guys about defenders and goalkeepers. Only three defenders have ever won the award in Matthias Sammer, Franz Beckenbauer and Fabio Cannavaro. Lev Yashin remains to this day the only keeper to win the Ballon d'Or. But at the very least, there is an award given out by France Football for best goalkeeper. The overall point I'm trying to make here is that there is a clear trend. It's not hidden or masked in any shape or form. Apart from the typical player selection, as you can imagine, the award has historically been plagued by controversies surrounding the actual voting process. As this is an award that was created by journalists, journalists from countries around the world form the pool of voters, many of whom are more than likely to vote for their fellow countrymen or players that they have personally seen play either for their team or against them. Off the bat, the potential for heavy bias is rather large which is why many people are strongly of the opinion that this award is nothing more than a glorified popularity contest. And all of this is not helped by the fact that there are frequently allegations of falsified votes, incorrect tallying of votes, voters claiming that their votes have been changed and straight up claims that the whole thing is rigged. It can be a mess. So why am I telling you this? Well, with this year's Ballon d'Or, as expected, not much has changed. Here we have a list of the top 10 players for the calendar year of 2021 according to the voting process. Of course we have players such as Jorginho, N'Golo Kante and Kevin De Bruyne. But let's be real, no matter how many tackles they put in, yards they covered, assists they made and successful progressive passes they completed, they never stood a chance. But hats off to Gianluigi Donnarumma as the only keeper in the 30-man shortlist. Dude had a great year and a fantastic Euros. So that brings us to the top 3 of the most recent edition of the Ballon d'Or. Hats off to Jorginho as he's done really well to make it onto the podium. However, a Champions League and a UEFA European Championship weren't enough to push him further. Although, if we're being honest, those were probably the reasons he was there in the first place. And that's not a slight on his playing ability, just on the trend that the award follows. As I mentioned in the intro, regardless of who actually won the award, this was always going to be a controversial pick. The gap between number 1 and number 2 says just that. I've actually made videos on both of these players in the past 2 weeks or so, so if you're interested in a detailed breakdown of their careers as well as the exploits of their past year, feel free to check those out. Today, we're just going to look at a brief snapshot of their respective performances. Also, note that the voting for the Ballon d'Or closed on the 24th of October 2021. 
However, it's only been about a month and not much has actually changed in the grand scheme of things. So I'll be speaking about results, statistics and records from after the closing date in this video to give an overall view of their year. I hope that's not a problem. First up, Lionel Messi, a man who needs no introduction. Now onto Ballon d'Or number 7, having played a great year in spite of trying circumstances. A Copa del Rey with Barcelona is all he won at club level, but he put up stellar numbers in the league scoring 30 on his way to his 8th Pichichi. But of course the big win for Messi came in the form of the 2021 Copa America, a tournament where he not only won the whole thing, but also won the player of the tournament, had the most goals and had the most assists, an out of this world return. So far his exploits for club and country have yielded 41 goals and 18 assists, nowhere near his personal best numbers wise, but certainly still elite numbers nonetheless. In combination with his achievements with club and country, these numbers were elite enough to make it hard to argue that he didn't deserve this year's award. I think the fact that he's had a slow start to life in France has made people forget just how good of a year he actually had before about August. Next up, Robert Lewandowski. This man had what can only be described as an absolute cracker of a year. The Bundesliga title was more or less a given. It is Bayern, after all. But let's not short sell just how much hard work and effort the team had to put in to retain it. There is a reason why they win every year after all, and it's not luck. Apart from that, the man picked up all sorts of individual awards and broke all sorts of records, most notably the Golden Shoe, as well as Gerd Müller's 49-year-old record of 40 goals in a season, besting it by one. He's also scored 64 for club and country and has assisted 12 so far. The actual year is not over, after all. All round, an insane year for the pole. Now, comparing these two from an individual perspective is where a big problem lies. It's a consequence of a cross-continental award, I guess. Most sensible fans are likely aware that the majority of the numbers and achievements I've just mentioned are not really compatible for direct comparisons. We are talking about different leagues, different competitions, different roles of the players and different circumstances by most metrics. 64 goals mostly in Germany and 41 mostly in Spain don't exactly mean the same thing after all. Bearing that in mind, this debate then becomes one of preference. Personal preference in most cases. Is the Bundesliga a farmer's league? Is the Copa America as difficult to win and as competitive as the Euros? Who was the better leader on the pitch? Who contributed the most to their team from an overall standpoint and why? All questions that can't be measured by numbers and that would receive different answers depending on who you ask. This is the dilemma at hand in most years. If a goalkeeper had a stellar year and an attacker had a stellar year, who was better at doing their job than the other? Not a better striker or keeper, but a better player based on their specific function. It's a tough question that almost always has more than one correct answer. With that being said, from an unbiased perspective, Messi and Lewandowski are both deserving of this year's Ballon d'Or. Both have had a great year and as a result of that, the absence of a golden ball shouldn't really matter in the grand scheme of things for the quote unquote loser. I personally would be able to get on board if either had won it. But in my subjective opinion, Lewandowski did edge it for me and I've let that opinion be known a few times in recent videos. So I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed. But I did pretty much realize that he stood no chance once I saw that they created a consolation award just for him, just for that night. That is, that is actually nuts. His ruthlessness in front of goal, calm yet terrorizing presence in the final third and overall industry have set him apart in this past year. Again, that's just my opinion. And again, I'm not even sure how much any of this actually matters, even in the scenario that he did win. So after all of that, a question that's been on the mind of many people for a very long time. Does the Ballon d'Or actually matter? Well, yes and no. It is prestigious and highly acclaimed. As the most recognizable award for the best player in the world, it's important to commemorate stellar individual performances. But at the same time, it seems to come down to a popularity contest in most cases and it seems as though if you're not scoring bucket loads, you're essentially ineligible. So perhaps it shouldn't be our metric for who the best players actually are. There are most definitely several more cons and several more pros to the award. However, I'm sure we all get the idea. The award isn't perfect. 
Also, it seems as though the award means more to fans and affects them far more than the actual footballers. I don't think the vast majority of footballers are losing sleep over not winning the award when they are in contention. Perhaps some angry quotes here and there, but realistically, I mean, they're all millionaires, they all have great lives, they're playing a sport for a living that we all love. I, I don't see what's to hate. So for anyone that thinks Ronaldo was losing sleep over not being nominated or whatever it is, he probably isn't. <laughs> like he's just, come on, be, let's be real here. Look at his life. But fans on the other hand, I'm not so sure. Judging by Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube comments, this is a matter of life or death, which it shouldn't be. Go out and touch grass, guys. I'm personally indifferent to it. Despite the potential for toxicity, the award creates opportunities for discourse on the top performers of the beautiful game, which, as you all know, I absolutely love. But I can also see the bad, which can definitely not be ideal. And that brings us to the close of this video, and I'd just like to leave you guys with one final thought. Despite all of this, and despite what anyone might tell you, I know who actually deserved the award, as well as GOAT status. And there we have it. Who do you guys think deserved the 2021 Ballon d'Or? Do you think the award still matters? Comment all your thoughts below. Hope you all enjoyed, cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.